projection of a vector na enna paapom projection just simply means a shadow suppose say two i am taking two vectors to call this vector to be vector b and another vector say vector a so i want to project vector a on vector b so i am projecting vector a on vector b then i have to imagine vector b to be a screen and imagine that the light rays are falling perpendicular to that screen appa light vandu in the direction ullu so this light will make a shadow of vector a on vector b that shadow will be nothing but of this length in the shadow ke peru da the projection of vector a on vector b so if you want to project a vector on another vector say vector a on vector b imagine b to be a screen and imagine that light rays are falling perpendicular to the screen then the shadow that the vector a will cast on that screen is called the projection of vector a on vector b suppose say this angle is theta then you can immediately find out that this is a right triangle so you can say cos theta equal to this projection let us call it as x x divided by a or you can say projection x equal to a cos theta so if the angle between a and b is theta then the projection of vector a on vector b will be nothing but a cos theta then we are going to make a useful mathematical formalism out of the projection projection konja useful la so for that i will start with a coordinate system say x axis and y axis so the usual vector say a position vector of the point p and i eduthukuren so let us call it as vector r be the position vector of the point p x comma y now ipo in the position vector i am going to project it along the x axis so i get the projection of vector a r on the x axis that is this vector and you know that its length will be x from this ordered pair let us call it as vector x now i am projecting the same vector on y axis so i know that this length is y now i write it as y now from the parallelogram law of vectors you can say vector r equal to vector x plus vector y now if you want to find this length of r you can very simply apply the pythagoras theorem this is y so i can apply the pythagoras theorem here so in order to get the length of r i will get it as root of x square plus y square remember i am writing it without an arrow mark to indicate that i am just writing the length so this will give the length of the vector now let us take this angle to be theta then from the concept of projection i can say that x is nothing but r cos theta from this triangle this is theta this is 90 degrees so cos theta is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse so to make it simple let me write it so cos theta equal to x divided by r or i can say x equal to r cos theta now if this angle is theta this angle will also be theta because these two lines are parallel so i can say from here i can write sin theta equal to y by r or i can say y equal to r sin theta now what i did is that i have taken a position vector r i took its projections along x axis and y axis called them as x and y then i can say vector r is equal to vector x plus vector y if i want to find the length of x from r i can use this relation this gives the projection of the vector along x axis and this equation gives the projection of the vector along y axis now for mathematical curiosity if i take it as 1 and 
And now if I square and add these two equations, I simply get this equation that x square plus y square equal to r square into cos square theta plus sin square theta. This is nothing but 1. So I can say x square plus y square equal to r square. This is what the relation that I have written over here. That I started with a vector r and along the axis I projected them along the x-axis and y-axis as vector x and vector y and I can write vector r equal to vector x plus vector y. So for a convenient notation I am splitting this vector x as its modulus multiplied by one unit vector. So I call that unit vector to be i along the x-axis. So it just simply separates its magnitude and the direction. So i indicates that it's a unit vector. So it has a magnitude 1. So even if I multiply x by 1, it is not going to change its magnitude. So I am writing it as x into i and y as y into j. So now I can write vector r equal to x i plus y j. So this is the most convenient notation for vectors. So a two dimensional vector I can write it in the form x i plus y j where x is its projection along the x axis and y is its projection along the y axis. So, if you have a vector r and its projection is x and y, then I can write vector r equal to x i plus y j. So, in the notation of the convenience, for example, I want to add two vectors. Addition is just simply adding the ordered pairs. So, I can say if you have two vectors R1 and say R2, another vector R2 representing points P1 and P2. So, let us define P1 as x1, y1 and p2 equal to x2 comma y2 so let me replace it by x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2 so i'm already particular the sum of the vector is nothing but the sum of the ordered pair so in the sum on the solve rather it is the diagonal of the parallelogram let us call it as r this point will be nothing but x1 plus x2 comma y1 plus y2. But in the vector in the notation le, you represent pannengana. that means if you have a vector r1 which is represented as x1 i plus y1 j and uh, vector r2 equal to x2 i plus y2 j then if i want to add these two vectors in a triangle or parallelogram you can just add the corresponding terms as x1 plus x2 i plus y1 plus y2 j so once the vectors are represented in this form the addition of the vectors become a very simple operation of just adding the corresponding components that will give the vector as the result so in the in the notation the usefulness and i think you are starting to realize now further this notation will be very useful for us either one the triangle like you condo or no no i move this w together with v so that these two vectors are in order this is possible because parallel vectors are equal 
ஸோ டபிள்யூ வந்து நீங்கள் பேரில் எங்கே ஷிஃப்ட் பண்ணாலும் அதில் தப்பு கிடையாது இப்போ நவ் திஸ் டூ வெக்டர்ஸ் ஆர் ரெடி டு பி அப்ளைட் ஃபார் ட்ரையாங்கிள் ஆஃப் வெக்டர்ஸ் ஸோ ஒன் த ஃபூட் ஆஃப் செகண்ட் வெக்டர் சிட் ஆன் த ஃபஸ்ட் வெக்டர் நவ் ஐ கேன் சே தீஸ் டூ வெக்டர்ஸ் ஆர் ஆர்டர் தே ஃபார்ம் த சேம் பார்ட் ஆஃப் த சைக்கிள் ஸோ இஃப் யூ வாண்ட் டு ஆட் தீஸ் டூ வெக்டர்ஸ் ஜஸ்ட் கம்ப்ளீட் த தேர்ட் சைட் டேக்கன் அண்ட் ஆப்போசிட் ஆர்டர் தட் வில் கீவ் த சம் ஆஃப் த வெக்டர்ஸ் இப்படி வந்து நீங்கள் பை யூசிங் த தியரம் ஆஃப் பேரலல் வெக்டர்ஸ் அண்ட் ட்ரையாங்கிள் ஆஃப் வெக்டர்ஸ் யூ கேன் ஆட் டூ வெக்டர்ஸ் ஸோ அனதர் வே வி ஹவ் சீன் இஸ் நத்திங் பட் த பேரலோகிராம் லா ஆஃப் வெக்டர்ஸ் ஸோ ஐ வில் பி டிராயிங் எ பேரலல் டு பி அண்ட் எ பேரலல் டு ஏ தென் திஸ் இஸ் வெக்டர் ஏ அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் வெக்டர் பி தென் த சம் வில் பி ரெப்ரஸன்ட் பை திஸ் வெக்டர் சிம்பிளி ஸோ தீஸ் ஆர் த டூ லாஸ் தட் கவர்ன்ஸ் த அடிஷன் ஆஃப் எ ட்ரையாங்கிள் தட் யூ ஆர் சீயிங் ஹியர் so either parallelogram la or triangle la for your convenience so so you have the freedom of moving the vector anywhere in the plane without change the direction or magnitude that you can shift it anywhere to a parallel location keeping in this mind and the triangle law of vectors or the parallelogram law of vectors you can add any vector in a plane ஸோ இப்போ வந்து வி ஹவ் சீன் தட் இஃப் யூ ஹவ் எ டூ டைமென்ஷனல் வெக்டர் சே ஆர் அண்ட் இட் ஹேஸ் காட் ப்ரொஜெக்ஷன் லாங் எக்ஸ் ஆக்சிஸ் அண்ட் ஒய் ஆக்சிஸ் ரெஸ்பெக்டிவ்லி எக்ஸ் அண்ட் ஒய் இந்த ஆர் வெக்டர் வந்து ஐ கேன் ரைட் இட் எஸ் எக்ஸ் ஐ ப்ளஸ் ஒய் ஜே வேர் ஐ அண்ட் ஜே ஆர் யூனிட் வெக்டர்ஸ் லாங் எக்ஸ் ஆக்சிஸ் அண்ட் ஒய் ஆக்சிஸ் நவ் whether this can be applied to a three dimensional vector okay so a three dimensional object is an object which needs three numbers which necessitate three numbers to have its position specified so i am taking three axes x axis say y axis and z axis so imagine a vector which is in this three dimensional space say r முதல்ல நான் என்ன பண்ணுறேன்னா ஐ ஆம் ட்ரைங் டு டேக் த ஷேடோ ஆஃப் திஸ் வெக்டர் ஆர் எலாங் த எக்ஸ் ஒய் பிளைன் ஓகே ஸோ ஐ இமேஜின் தட் லைட் ரைஸ் ஆர் ஃபாலிங் பெர்பெண்டிகுலர் டு த எக்ஸ் ஒய் பிளைன் ஸோ ஐ வில் கெட் எ ஷேடோ ஆஃப் இட் சம்திங் லைக் திஸ் ஸோ திஸ் வில் பி நைன்டி டிகிரி ஆங்கிள்ஸ் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் அ ஷேடோ தட் இஸ் காஸ்ட் ஆன் த எக்ஸ் ஒய் பிளைன் நவ் இஃப் ஐ லுக் அட் திஸ் வெக்டர் then i can take the projection of this vector along the y axis and x axis so let us take this as y and uh, this length as x so the length is starting from the origin to this point of is taken as x now let us take this vector as r1 now r1 will be nothing but x i plus y j now i take the shadow of this r along the z axis so i imagine that light rays are falling perpendicular to the z axis and let us call that projection value as z since this is z this vector also will be z now i got a right triangle over here now i can see that vector r can be represented as r1 plus is at j where j sorry is at k where k is the unit vector along z axis like i stands for x axis j stands for y axis z k stands for z axis now i got the value of r on as x i plus y j plus z k for now you can see that the same form is preserved that is any three dimensional vector r can be written in the form xi plus yj plus zk so this is the most convenient notation so adutha namu paaka poradhu vandu multiplication of vectors multiplication of vectors la vandu we are going to see three categories one multiplication of a vector by a scalar two we multiply two vectors 
to get a scalar as the result and multiplication of two vectors to get a vector as the result and we will see what it is so first one we take the first example we are going to multiply a vector by a scalar for the curve so what happens when we multiply a vector by a scalar so we start with our coordinate system say x comma y and i take our usual uh, position vector for some point let us take a point say 2 comma 4 so i take this length to be 2 and this length to be 4 now i can draw a position vector for that point say p now i am going to multiply this vector by a, by a scalar so let us take an example of a scalar to be m equal to 2 which is a scalar so what i am doing is that i am just multiplying this ordered pair by this that scalar so i will get the new ordered pair to be 4 comma 8 so this 4 comma 8 will actually lie along the same line of it multiplication of vectors on the the first kind of multiplication is that you take a vector and multiply it by a scalar or a vector or a scalar or a, or a number which we multiply so what happens so we take a coordinate axis x and y and let us take a point say an ordered pair 2 comma 1 so I take two units along x axis and one unit along y axis and this point say p is 2 comma 1 so the point p on the plane immediately I can draw a position vector say r so that this length is 2 and this length is 1 now if I multiply this ordered pair by a scalar say a scalar say m equal to 2 then I will get the new ordered pair to be 4 comma 2 now if, if I try to plot this 4 comma 2 it will be a vector which is in the same line but its length got multiplied by 2 so in short we can say that if you take a vector and multiply it by a scalar you will get a new vector which is in the same direction but its length will get elongated by the scalar so if you take a vector say r and multiply it by a scalar m the new vector will be parallel to r but its length will be m times the length of r so if you fix m to be 2 the new vector will be double in its size in the same direction and if you take m to be 0.5 the length will be half the size of the vector r in the same direction so when you are multiplying a vector by a scalar you can produce parallel vectors with its magnitude changing corresponding to the scalar we will see the second kind of multiplication Adukone we call it as the scalar product the scalar product Idukka dot product anna solo it is otherwise known as the dot product so let us see what is a dot product you take two vectors say vector a and another vector vector b they are having an angle theta so if i want to find out the dot product between vector a and vector b 
which will be represented by a dot b so what i do here is that if i want to take the dot product between a and b i will project vector b on vector a so this forms a right triangle and this projection will be nothing but b cos theta and now i take b cos theta then multiply it by the length of vector a which is a so i will get a b cos theta remember we take only the magnitude of vector a and the vector b and the result will be a scalar so this kind of multiplication is what you call as a dot product so dot product is done such that if you take two vectors a and b its dot product will be a scalar whose magnitude will be a b cos theta know that we have three unit vectors along x axis y axis and z axis appo namu on x axis la irukra unit vector we call it as i the unit vector along y axis we call as j and the unit vector along z axis we call as k and we know that x uh, y and z are perpendicular to each other so all these angles are 90 degrees so all these angles are 90 degrees now there is an interesting property let us take what is i dot j so from our definition in order to find the dot product between two vectors i take the magnitude of i which is 1 then i take the magnitude of j which is 1 then multiply it by the cos of the angle between them which is 90 degrees we know that cos 90 is 0 so i dot j becomes 0 similarly j dot k and i dot k all this will become zero so in short you can say i dot j i dot k and j dot k which is also equal to j dot i equal to k dot i equal to k dot j all these fellows are equal to zero because they have an angle of 90 degree between them rendu vector ku nadavula 90 degree angle irukna ingana when you take dot product it will become zero because cos 90 is always zero so dot product between the unit vectors i j i and j j and k and k and i are zero now let us take similar unit vectors now i try to find out what is i dot i so in order to find i dot i i take the magnitude of i as 1 and multiply it by the magnitude of i again as 1 then cos of the angle between i and i they have an angle of 0 degree between them which is 1 so 1 into 1 into 1 which is equal to 1 so i dot i equal to j dot j equal to k dot k equal to 1 product vand between a and b is defined as a dot b which is equal to the length of a in the length of b in the cos of the angle between a and b so remember if a, a and b are perpendicular that is if they have an angle of 90 degrees this dot product will be always equal to 0 and if the angle between a and b is 0 then a dot b will be nothing but a into b because cos 0 will be 1 so into 1 equal to ab these are two special cases which is of much use so let us take two vectors r1 and r2 so ungalku theriyum in general form r1 if it is a three dimensional vector adha vandha x1i plus 
y1 j plus z1 k in the middle. This is the standard representation where x1 is the projection of r1 along x axis and y1 along y axis and z1 along z axis. And let us write r2 equal to x2 i plus y2 j plus z2 k. Now I am going to find out what is r1 dot r2. So dot product one, it follows all the rules of multiplication. So I can write r1 as x1i plus y1j plus z1k dot x2i plus y2j plus z2k. Now I can open the bracket. So I multiply x1i with this term. So I can write it as x1 x2 into i dot i plus x1 y2 into i dot j plus x1 i into x1 z2 into i dot k plus now i repeat it by doing y1 plus y1 j sorry y1 into x2 into j dot i plus y1 y2 into j dot j plus y1 z2 into j dot k plus z1 x2 into k dot i plus z1 y2 into k dot j plus z1 z2 into k dot k. Now I know that all these terms like i dot j, i dot k, if they have dissimilar terms, they all will become 0. So only the survi only surviving terms will be x1, x2 into i dot i plus y1, y2 into j dot j plus z1, z2 into k dot k all other terms will become zero. So I can eliminate all these terms which are in between them. So, so what is rest will be only the similar terms. So I can say R1 dot R2 will be nothing but x1 x2 into i dot i plus y2 y1 into j dot j plus z1 z2 into k dot k but you know that i dot i one it is equal to 1 so i can write this as 1 so what i simply get will be only these terms so the problem has become much simpler that r1 dot r2 will be nothing but x1 x2 plus y1 y2 plus z1 z2 so it's a scalar which will be a number now it is immediately clear why this notation is much useful so we will render vector one r1 equal to x1 i plus y1 j plus z1 k r2 equal to x2 i plus y2 j plus z2 k r1 dot r2 will be nothing but x1 x2 plus y1 y2 plus z1 z2 and it will not have i j k because the result is actually a scalar the dot product is a number so if we have dot product if a dot b is equal to a b cos theta which is a scalar so that is also equal to b dot a so you can say scalar product is commutative a dot b is equal to b dot a because result was number of scalar it doesn't depend on the order by which we multiply it and also if I take r1 a vector r1 as x1i plus 
y1 j plus z1 k where i j k are unit vectors and r2 equal to x2 i plus y2 j plus z2 k then r1 dot r2 which is equal to r2 dot r1 can very simply be find out by multiplying the corresponding terms and then adding them together that is x1 x2 plus y1 y2 plus z1 z2 so no ijk in the result because this is a number and also if a and b are perpendicular then a dot b will be zero So if a dot b, a and b are perpendicular, then a dot b will be equal to 0. 